We're going to take the samples that we've prepared earlier and extract the DNA. In order to do this, you'll need the following pieces of equipment. First, you'll need pestles, which we'll grind the samples with, scissors, forceps, you can use those in order to actually get a smaller piece of that sample. We'll need micropipettes, and here I have the three sizes. The P1000, which holds from 100 to 1000 microliters. The P100, which holds from 10 to 100 microliters. And the smallest one, our gray pipette, the P10, which holds from 0.5 to 10 microliters. And of course, I have the appropriate tips for each size. For the pipettes, of course, you'll need a waste beaker for the excess pipettes. And it's helpful to have some napkins lying around for our uh, DNA isolation step. You're going to need a tube rack along with some 1.5 ml microfuge tubes. You need two tubes for each sample that you're going to be preparing. For the larger equipment in this step, you'll need a heat block or a water bath. You need to have a heat block set at 65 degrees and one at 37 degrees. If you only have one heat block, just allow yourself enough time for it to cool in between steps. If you have a water bath, it's easy to change the temperature. We're going to start at 65 degrees, so please set your uh, heat block at this time. You'll also need a microcentrifuge in order to spin your tubes down. One of the most important things you'll need is a notebook. You want to note all of your samples, give them a number, an ID. Uh, I'm just calling mine sample one, two, and three. Note who collected them, note where they were collected, as well as any other information that you acquired. It'd also be helpful to have a copy of the protocol to follow along. As far as chemical reagents, you're going to need the nucleolysis solution. This you can already have on ice, and I'm going to put it on this beaker of crushed ice that I have here. You'll also need the protein precipitation solution, the RNA solution, and at the last step, you'll need the DNA rehydration solution. When we actually precipitate the DNA, we're going to be using isopropanol, so you'll need a tube of that, as well as 70% ethanol. Now, you may have your, your chemical reagents already aliquoted into smaller tubes. I have the full-size uh, stock versions. Whatever you have is fine. Just be sure to follow the protocol so that you use the proper amount for each step. All of the chemical reagents we'll be using in this protocol are extremely safe, non-toxic, non-hazardous. However, it's always good scientific practice to use personal protective equipment. So if you choose to, you can wear a pair of latex gloves. Just be sure to change them uh, frequently in order to avoid uh, cross-contamination of samples. For the protein precipitation step, uh, since the chemical can be a little bit of an irritant, you may choose to wear goggles, and that's what's recommended, so I'll be wearing that during that step. 